Hello. This talk will discuss how to accelerate your application using CUDA libraries. So in this talk, we'll show you how easy it can be to accelerate a large existing code base using CUDA libraries. We will be using GNU Octave, a well-known and widely used application of about 350,000 lines as an example of an existing code base. For those of you not familiar with GNU Octave, it's a high-level numerical analysis application used in a great number of fields. By way of comparison, it is somewhat similar to MATLAB, which we will note is already extensively accelerated using the GPUs. Specifically, we will accelerate GNU Octave on the GPU using the CUDA version of the BLAS library. And BLAS stands for Basic Linear Algebra Subprograms, and it's a collection of routines to manipulate dense matrices. KUBLAS is the BLAS library ported to the GPU. So exactly what we're going to do is accelerate the matrix-matrix multiplication in GNU Octave using KUBLAS. So a little bit about the configuration. We're using the latest versions of GNU Octave, uh, NVIDIA CUDA, and Intel MKL. And so I want to stress that we're not just comparing against the generic BLAS routines distributed with GNU Octave. We're comparing against the Intel Math Kernel Library, or Intel MKL, which is really uh, the next best alternative. So this is the test script that we will be using to measure the performance of the matrix-matrix multiplication in GNU Octave. Simply loop over uh, the matrix sizes from 2 to 2,000, create two square matrices full of random numbers, record a start time, perform the matrix-matrix multiplication, record an end time, and then compute and display the gigaflops achieved. And that's throughout this presentation, it's all gigaflops in double precision. So while this is uh, fairly simple, I need to remind you that it is the GNU Octave runtime which is being accelerated, not just this script. So any script, however sophisticated, using that uses matrix-matrix multiplication will be accelerated. So now... We're going to run this script. And this is using the basic version of GNU Octave uh, using the Intel MKL. So an unadulterated, an unmodified version of GNU Octave using the MKL libraries. And we're achieving here about 37 gigaflops. So now, if we do a little more uh, rigorous testing on this machine, a quad-core uh, i7 at 2.8 gigahertz, here we're plotting the gigaflops achieved in double precision versus matrix size. And it starts low for very, very small matrices, but quickly rises to a maximum of, of about 43 gigaflops per second. And that's pretty close to the theoretical limit for this chip. So now I'm going to show you the code edits which are required to accelerate this application on the GPU. You just search for uh, DGEM. That's the double precision matrix matrix multiplication routine in BLAS. And replace calls to DGEM with calls to KUBLAS DGEM. It only happens in one place, but we also have to add an interface definition because GNU Octave is written in C, and the KUBLAS is traditionally, or I'm sorry, the BLAS routine is traditionally a Fortran library, so we have to do one extra thing, but that's very simple. So I'll show you now all the things that we need to do to accelerate this on the GPU. So dmatrix.cc, search for dgem. Here's the interface definition. Copy that and say the kublas interf dgem interface is exactly the same as the regular DGEM interface. And now I just replace DGEM with Kublaz DGEM. I save that and recompile. And once again, I'll point out that we're 
updating the GNU Octave program, not the scripts. We're accelerating the GNU Octave program, not the scripts. So any script that uses matrix matrix multiplication will see an acceleration due to this change. We're almost done, so we rerun Octave, we run our test script, and now instead of 43 gigaflops per second, we're achieving for 2,000 by 2,000 matrix 136. If I go back to the presentation, here we are plotting those results again, gigaflops double precision versus matrix size. The blue line is our original performance curve from the uh, using the Intel MKL. And the green line is now what we get using the Kublas library. And you can see that for a large enough matrix, we reach as much as 255 gigaflops per second, which is better than 6x speed up versus the original result of about 43 gigaflops. So we've been uh, you know, able to see performance of up to 255 gigaflops, a 6x speed up in under 10 minutes of work. And I, again, reiterate this, that this accelerates all existing scripts that use matrix-matrix multiplication. As well, we've accelerated things that, more than just the matrix-matrix multiplication, anything that uses the matrix-matrix multiplication is accelerated as well. And that would be, in this case, the matrix exponential and the pseudo-inverse. So pretty good. But if you found this useful, if you had just a little more time, you can do a lot more. For example, you might have noticed that for very small matrices, the MKL, MKL library was faster than the Kublas library as well. Since this very quick implementation places all of the matrix data on the GPU, there is a limit to the size of multiplication that can be done. So if you had just five more minutes, you could add a conditional statement that, to the DGEM call and use MKL for very small matrices or for matrices which were too large to fit on the GPU. And you could use Kublas for all other matrices. And this would give you the best of both worlds. You would always be performing at least as well as you ever had, or at least as well as the MKL library will allow. And for any, any matrix sizes that are applicable to the GPU, you can see up to a 6x acceleration. So pretty good. You get the best of both worlds. If, however, you had just a few more hours, you could use streams and concurrency to overlap communication and computation. That is, as a portion of the matrix multiplication problem was being transferred to the GPU, another portion would already be on the GPU and would be being computed. That'll further improve your performance up to about 300 gigaflops. But much more importantly, it allows you then to handle arbitrarily large matrices. And I need to stress this, that for matrix matrix multiplication, there really isn't a limit to the size of matrix you can do on the GPU, the, the size of the matrices that you can multiply using the GPU. So that's a good improvement. But if you had a few more hours, you know, you could implement hybrid computing. We don't just have to use the CPU or the GPU. We can use both. And so if you have, say, a dual socket machine that can produce about 100 gigaflops per second on the, on the host machine, you can combine the two and get up to 400 gigaflops per second. Not too bad. And again, if you had an extra day, it doesn't take much, more, much longer than that, you can place up to eight GPUs in a single machine, and you can use them all simultaneously. And if you did that for large enough matrices, you could be seeing you know, multiplication speeds well over one teraflop. So we've shown you some of the benefits of the Kublas library, but there are additional GPU, li GPU accelerated libraries that are available from NVIDIA for free, including such things as fast Fourier transforms, uh, sparse matrix operations, and others. As well, there are many third-party and open-source GPU accelerated libraries that are also available. So these are not only building block libraries uh, for tasks like dense and sparse linear algebra, but very domain-specific libraries for tasks ranging from things like reservoir simulation to the investigation of quantum chromodynamics. 
So there's a lot of other libraries out there. If you want to learn more about the what is actually there, I'd, I'd refer you to uh, http uh, developer.nvidia.com. So that's the that's the demonstration. We've achieved a 6x speed up in under 10 minutes, and most of that 10 minutes was just me talking. I, I hope that I've convinced you that GPU computing, in many cases, can be very easy. So thank you very much. And if uh, if you have if you have any questions, I, I'd I'd like to try and answer them now. Thank you.